In this video, let's see a question based on the theorem we started in the previous video. The previous video asked us to learn about a theorem related to the adjoint of a matrix. It is adjoint A multiplied by A is equal to determinant A multiplied by I is equal to A into adjoint A. Wherein we know what is A, we know A is a square matrix we take into consideration. What is I? I is the identity matrix of the same order of the square matrix. Now when we know all this from the previous video, the time has come to study a question related to that. Let's see what the question has to say and let's get started with the solution. The question is verify a joint A into A is equal to determinant A into I is equal to A into a joint A for a given matrix A which is ABCD which is having four elements ABCD. Now what I know is that to verify everything I have to first solve all these three things. Let's get started with the solution. The solution says firstly find a joint A. Now what is a joint A? A joint A is basically the transpose of the cofactor matrix. So if I have A, B, C, D as the matrix A which I write it again I have A as A, B, C, D. If this is the case with the matrix, what is cofactor matrix? Cofactor matrix if I write in short as COF dot matrix, I know that it will be comprising of all the cofactors. The cofactor C11, the cofactor C12, the cofactor C21 and the cofactor C22. Now what is the cofactor C11? The cofactor C11 means the cofactor of the element A. And what is the cofactor of this element A? It is obtained by ignoring the first row and the first column. So you basically get D. And since 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 is an even number, so I just write D or plus D. What about C12? C12 means first row second element we are taking into consideration. So it is first row second element which is B which is also B here. Now what about the ignoring part? I know that B is at the junction of the second column and the first row. So I have to ignore those and I am left with nothing but called as C. Now this C will have what sign? It is decided by this addition 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3 which is odd so make it minus C. Let's move on to C13. C13 means what? C13 means first row third column which doesn't exist. So next we have to move to again C21 and not C13. Had it been a three ordered matrix we would have got C13 but this time we just have next which is called as C21. So let's write it as C21. C21 means what? Means second row first column so which is C. Ignore some things called as the first column. Ignore the second row you are left with B. And when you are left with B, I know that B is something which would have which sign? It would have a negative sign. Why a negative sign? Because 2 plus 1 is 3 which is odd so it is minus B. Some people would also write it as minus B this way. Right? Last but not the least is C22. C22 means second row, second column. Second row, second column means the element D we are taking into consideration. We are taking D into consideration. C we had already taken. D into consideration means remove this row and column. Remove the second row, remove the second column. You are left with A. And since 2 plus 2 is 4 which is an even number, it is only and only plus A. Now when cofactors are given to us, we can just write down the cofactor matrix. And the transpose of that matrix will be the adjoint matrix. C11 is D, C12 is minus C, C21 is minus D and C22 is A. This is the cofactor matrix. Now when you have the cofactor matrix and if I name it as C, I know this cofactor matrix transpose is adjoint. So adjoint of A is basically transpose of C transpose of cofactor matrix which is nothing but what which is simply obtained by taking transpose of this matrix. So the first row becomes the first column, the second row becomes the second column. 
if you have watched the previous video very carefully the previous videos very carefully you might know the short trick to find the adjoint the adjoint is obtained by interchanging a and d that means interchanging these elements and then just placing negative sign in front of these two elements so that is how we got it we followed the lengthier method to opt a subjective question if you get a subjective question just follow the lengthy method if you get a objective one just interchange these two elements and place a negative sign so when adjoint is obtained you need to verify how to verify let's do it quickly so for verification purpose the first thing that i have into consideration is adjoint a multiplied by a what is adjoint let's write the matrix it is d minus b minus c a this is adjoint multiplied by a is a b c d so it is a b c d now how to do it you know that first row first column first row second column second row first column second row second column so what is it it is d a minus b c so it is d a minus b c next is first row second column right so d into b is d b or b d minus b d now if you see that d b is also b d only so b d minus b d is zero so directly you can write what you can write zero so let's write zero here next second row first column so this is your second row and this is your first column c into a is minus c a or minus a c here it is a into c which is plus a c minus ac plus ac is again zero last but not the least you have what second row and second column so it is minus c into b which is minus bc and next is a into d which is ad so it is plus ad now if you watch it carefully you basically have what you have minus bc plus ad then you have zero then you have zero then you again have minus bc plus ad and if you again watch it more carefully you can take something common what common you can take minus bc plus ad common so it is minus bc plus ad which has come out to be common inside what you have is inside you have 1 0 and what is 1 0 1 it is nothing but the identity matrix so it is minus bc plus ad into i and what is minus bc plus ad if you watch the matrix that was given to you very carefully it was the a matrix and now if you want to find determinant of a from this matrix what do you need to do you need to cross multiply ad minus bc that is what you'll be doing so it will be ad minus bc or in short it will be minus bc plus ad so if that is the case that means minus bc plus ad this value that you are getting is no, nothing but what it is del a so it is equal to del a into i so you started with adjoint a into a you got it equal to del a into i that means first part is already solved adjoint a into a is equal to del a into i the next part that i need to solve is what i need to solve it a into adjoint a and that should also come out to equal to del a into i only so let's do that i need to solve a into adjoint a this time so what is my a into adjoint a we need to see that let's solve a into adjoint a we'll be skipping some steps so as to ease the calculation a is what a b c d adjoint a is what let's write adjoint a is what we solved it here d minus b minus c a so it is d minus b minus c a now again first row first column first row second column second row first column second row second column so let's follow it this is your first row this is your first column it should be a into d which is ad b into c which is bc minus sign is there so it is ad minus bc next first row second column so first row with the second column a into b is minus ab because minus sign is there b into a is plus ab so ab minus ab is zero quickly let's move to the second row and the first column c into d c into d is cd c into d is again cd but negative sign is there so cd minus cd is zero last but not the least what i have i have the second row and the second column 
second row and the second column means what? It means C into B is minus BC. A into D is AD. So it is again AD minus BC. Now again you see what can be taken out as common? AD minus BC can be taken out as common. Taking it as common, inside you have 1001. Now what is 1001? It is nothing but the identity matrix. And what is the value of AD minus BC? AD minus BC or BC minus, minus BC plus AD is del A. So it is equal to del of A into I. Now, adjoint A multiplied by A is also equal to del A into I. A into adjoint A is also equal to del A into I. That means what? That means all these three, three things are actually what? That means they are equal. So when these three things are equal, I can just write out the final result that yes, I have verified adjoint A into A is equal to del A into I is equal to A into adjoint A. I write here hence proved or hence verified the theorem.